Would you risk your shot at winning the Olympic gold medal to indulge in some delinquent activities? Keep watching to see what these sports stars did to destroy their careers. I have a fighter in me, kind of a fighting spirit, and I can embrace that because I am passionate about my sport and what I do. Hope Solo's fall began in 2012 when she tested positive for a banned substance, according to Us Weekly. She claimed to not know the medication she was on contained the illegal drug. Then in 2014, things got even uglier for Solo. Hope Solo is going so hard, she's beating people up, and we need help. Solo was arrested for domestic violence when she got into a fight with her half-sister and nephew, during which she was tackled to the ground and threatened an officer while cuffed. Later at the booking station, when asked to remove a necklace, she boastfully told the police officer that it was worth more than he made in a year. Then in 2015, she was suspended by U.S. soccer for her involvement in her husband Jeremy Stevens' DUI arrest. In 2016, Solo was slapped with a six-month suspension for calling Team Sweden a bunch of cowards after the U.S. lost to them in Rio. I am sorry. I said it was a cowardly way to play, and now I've been killed in the media. Terminated contract. Despite a stellar 14-year career in the NBA, Lamar Odom has a long and bitter history with drug abuse. In 2012, Odom ended his run with the Dallas Mavericks. As Mavs GM Donnie Nelson put it, he's dealt with a lot of personal issues. At this point, we need to be able to count on some things. But the downward spiral continued when Odom was arrested on a DUI in August 2013. Odom's most brutal fall from grace came in October 2015 when he was found unconscious at a Nevada brothel after a drug binge, as reported by Us Weekly. I cheated death, and I've had a lot of loss in my life. And that's just something I don't want to put anybody in my family or anybody that loves me through. Odom completed a month-long stint in rehab. NFL fans knew former Rutgers star Ray Rice as a powerful running back who delivered shots to defenders, but when TMZ published footage of Rice dragging then fiance Janae Palmer out of an Atlantic City elevator after an altercation, the rest of the nation knew him on a completely different level. Rice was indicted on third-degree aggravated assault. In March that year, Rice avoided trial and was accepted into a pre-trial intervention program. During that time, the NFL suspended Rice for a measly two games and fined the star athlete $58,000. By September, Rice made headlines again, with new footage of the elevator incident showing Rice violently knocking Palmer unconscious. The Ravens released him from the team, while the NFL suspended him indefinitely. Rice later beat the suspension on appeal. One of the sport's most decorated and celebrated athletes, Lance Armstrong shocked the world when he was stripped of all seven of his Tour de France titles in October 2012. According to ABC News, the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency published a report with testimony from 11 of Armstrong's teammates stating he used illegal drugs. Sponsors like Nike dropped him from campaign ads, but Armstrong continued to deny doping until a damning January 2013 interview with Oprah. Did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. Did you ever blood dope or use blood transfusions to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. The fallout left plenty of people disappointed, including his Livestrong cancer charity. Armstrong was later stripped of his 2000 Olympic bronze medal. NFL star Chad Johnson's career came crashing down when he was arrested for headbutting his then-wife Evelyn Lozada in August 2012. Johnson was charged with misdemeanor domestic battery, spent one night in jail, and was released on a $2,500 bond. But less than 24 hours later, the Miami Dolphins officially terminated Johnson's contract. Regarding the incident, he told Inside the NFL he takes full responsibility. I'm human. I've, my time had come, you know, and I made a mistake. Chad has to go deep down inside and figure out where you went wrong. At what point did you lose focus on what's most important? What you see is what you get. Ryan Lochte's career as an Olympic swimmer took a dive after he was caught in a ridiculous lie. Lochte claimed he and his teammates were robbed at gunpoint on the way home from a party during the 2016 Rio Olympics. But the truth quickly unfolded to reveal Lochte and his buddies had drunkenly vandalized a gas station bathroom and were stopped by an armed security guard. The swimmer ultimately apologized to fans in the city of Rio in an interview on Today, saying, They put on a great games and my immature, intoxicated behavior um, tarnished that a little. But the aftermath not only brought shame to the American team, the U.S. Olympic Committee suspended Lochte from swimming for 10 months. 
He also had stipends withheld, lost sponsorship deals, and was banned from visiting the White House with Team USA, according to the LA Times. The media had me convicted of doing something wrong before I had even done anything at all. Tanya Harding's career as a figure skater was permanently put on ice after it was revealed her ex-husband, Jeff Gillooly, and a handful of other men allegedly carried out an attack on skater Nancy Kerrigan's knee just six weeks before the 94 Olympic Games. Gillooly pled guilty and all went to jail, except Harding, who eventually pled guilty to hindering the investigation and confessed to knowing the details of the plot. Many of you will be unable to forgive me for that. It will be difficult to forgive myself. In total, she received three years probation, was ordered to complete 500 hours of community service, and pay a $160,000 fine. Kerrigan would recover and go on to win silver at the games while Harding performed poorly. Harding was ultimately banned from U.S. figure skating for life. How do I get a fair shot here? We also judge on presentation. Suck my d During the 1997 NFL draft, the upstart Carolina Panthers selected wide receiver Ray Carruth, who seemed to be a surefire superstar. But just two years later, he was out of the league and in prison after hiring three hitmen to help him murder his pregnant girlfriend, 24-year-old real estate agent Sharika Adams. Adams' baby, Chancellor Lee Adams, was delivered by emergency cesarean section and diagnosed with cerebral palsy and permanent brain damage. While Carruth was convicted in 2001 of conspiracy to commit murder and sentenced to 18 to 24 years without parole. In a 2018 interview from prison, Carruth told WBTV he regretted his actions. If I could change anything, I'd change the whole situation. His mother would still be here and I wouldn't be where I'm at. A dual-threat quarterback for Texas A&M, Johnny Manziel earned the nickname Johnny Football for his sensational play on the field, making him the first freshman to win the coveted Heisman Trophy Award as the best player in college football. That was enough to convince the Cleveland Browns to pick him in the first round of the 2014 NFL Draft, despite questions about his character after an off-the-field incident where he was arrested for disorderly conduct and giving a fake ID to police. But drafting Manziel turned out to be a mistake. After just his third preseason game, Manziel was fined $12,000 for making an obscene gesture at Washington's bench. After a stint in rehab following that season, Manziel was pulled over by police after an argument that got out of hand with his then-girlfriend. Charges of domestic violence were eventually dismissed. In 2016, after just two seasons, the Browns waived Manziel, who has since revealed he has been diagnosed as bipolar, the first double-leg amputee to compete in the Olympics, the man nicknamed Blade Runner was a worldwide inspiration to millions. So the world was shocked in 2013 when South African athlete Oscar Pistorius was arrested for shooting his girlfriend to death on Valentine's Day. Supermodel Riva Steenkamp was in the bathroom when Pistorius shot her four times through a closed door. He claimed he mistook her for an intruder, but the courts didn't buy it, convicting him of culpable homicide and eventually sentencing him to 15 years in prison. After being selected second overall behind Peyton Manning by the San Diego Chargers in the 1998 NFL Draft, quarterback Ryan Leaf said, I'm looking forward to a 15-year career, a couple of trips to the Super Bowl, and a parade through downtown San Diego. Instead, he became known as arguably the biggest draft bust in NFL history thanks to erratic behavior, beginning with a fine before his first season even started, and peaking with an infamous locker room meltdown. Listen, don't talk to me, all right? Knock it off! Leaf later said that was the moment he knew his career was over, just three games into his rookie season. During the next two seasons, he served a four-game suspension for an obscenity-laced tirade directed at Chargers personnel, had to be forcibly stopped by coaches from going after a heckling fan, and was rumored to fake a wrist injury so he could skip practice and play golf. After finishing the 2000 season 1 and 15, the Chargers cut him, and not long after, he was out of the NFL for good. After struggling for years with addiction, Leaf was arrested in Montana in 2012. I felt like my career was a failure. I mean, I went to my lake house in Montana, I would collect as many pills as I could, and I'd disappear for like three months. He ended up spending two years in prison, an experience that proved transformative. In 1995, the University of Nebraska's star running back Lawrence Phillips pleaded not guilty to assaulting another student during an altercation at a blocked intersection. Less than a year later, he broke into a teammate's apartment, where he found his former girlfriend and subsequently knocked her down and dragged her down three flights of stairs by her hair. 
He was arrested, suspended by the team, then reinstated just in time for the 1996 Fiesta Bowl despite outcry from national media and school faculty. Phillips then declared for the 1996 NFL Draft, where the St. Louis Rams ignored all the red flags and selected him with the sixth overall pick. He was released two years later due to his troubling off-field behavior. He then signed with the Miami Dolphins, where he played two games before being cut after pleading no contest to misdemeanor battery. After a year off, he signed with the San Francisco 49ers, where his pass blocking was so terrible, it played a role in ending Hall of Fame quarterback Steve Young's career. After football, Phillips received 31 years in prison for attacking his girlfriend and driving his car into three teenagers. In 2016, he was found dead at the age of 40 in his cell. It was suspected that he took his own life after being charged with killing his cellmate. Really sad when you see that much talent uh, end up like that. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK-8255.